Hello, welcome to Culture TV and to our online programme, Let's Speak Russian. This is lesson eight. So here we are, at last. We've made it to the final lesson on the alphabet. There are just three letters remaining, and of course they are the ones that definitely stand out among the rest. Not only are they quite odd-looking themselves, but they also don't have a capitalised version. So what's going on? So first of all, these three letters are, well, pretty much unique to the Eastern Slavic languages. So they are supposed to be hard, just to warn you. And the fact that there is only a lowercase version of these letters is purely because you don't get them at the start of words, only ever in the middle or at the end. And it doesn't end there. There are many other strange properties about these letters that we'll be talking about in this video. Firstly, two of these letters here aren't strictly speaking letters. They're rather signs, as they're called in Russian. And that's because they don't have their own sounds associated with them. And instead, they just serve as some mark or sign, almost a piece of punctuation. The second one, though, which is the one we'll start with, does have a sound, and it is U. U. Listen again. U. So again, this is supposed to be unfamiliar to you. You don't really find this sound in many other languages. And the best way to think of it is as being similar to the sound that you get in English words like sit, lip, rip, tip, and so on. That vowel sound that you get in the middle of these words, i. Again, it's just harsher and deeper. It's a rear sound, so it's coming from further back in your mouth. You have to move your tongue backwards. So imagine that you're about to make the e or e sound that you get in English. You now have to pull your tongue backwards and get this rather unusual u sound. So I'm not going to go into any more detail about how to pronounce this word. That's up to you now. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just need to listen, repeat and practice. That's all you need to do and you'll get there eventually. Let's have a look at some words. So here's the first one. Ryba. Ryba. Of course, the rolling R there at the start doesn't really help, but the point is that you get the U sound, right? So, ryba, ryba. So your starting point can be ryba, as if you did have that I sound in English, ryba, but then pull your tongue backwards, ryba, ryba. And again, it's fine if it doesn't work now, it will do later, trust me. Oh, and by the way, this word means fish. Here's the next word. Dim. Dim. And dim means smoke. Try repeating this out loud yourself. Excellent. Dim. And this is followed by Bustra. Bustra. Once again. Bustra. Okay, now you try this. Yes, very good. Bustra. And this means fast. And supposedly the English word bistro, so a small cafe or restaurant, is somehow distantly related to this word in Russian. So sort of like fast food, if you like. And the last word is Sydney. Sydney. So two opportunities here for you to practice this letter. Sydney. Go on, you try it now. Brilliant. Sydney. Okay, so that was the letter U. Just keep practicing and you'll be fine. Now let's move on to the signs. So yes, okay, they are letters because they're part of an alphabet, but they don't have a sound associated with them. So this one here in Russian is called the hard sign. And its role is to simply separate a consonant and a vowel sound that would normally be blended together. So if you remember when we looked at the letter year, for example, 
we saw that because of the y sound that you get there at the start, it blends in with any preceding consonants, making them softer. So tie instead of tie. Now this hard sign reverses that. It stops that from happening and basically shows that the y sound, which you do get with the y when it's at the start of a word, for example, should be pronounced. It's much easier to understand this if I show you what I mean. So here's one word. The correct pronunciation is wirst. Wirst. All right? Wirst. Now, if we did not have this hard sign, it would be wirst. Wirst. So listen to the difference. Wirst with the hard sign versus wirst without. So when you don't have the hard sign there, the y almost disappears and the v and y together blend in. Whilst if you put in the hard sign, it tells you that the consonant and in this case y vowel sound need to be separated and therefore you get the y sound coming through. It really is much easier than it sounds. So in this word, wirst. The next word is abiyom. A biyom. You can really just think of it as a y. If you don't want to make life complicated, literally just think of it as a y sound. A biyom. It's the same for this next word. Subjekt. Subjekt. A subject. Subjekt. You try pronouncing this yourself now as well. Yes, very good. Subjekt. And the last word, siedobneje, siedobneje, siedobne, which means edible. So the main takeaway message here is that this letter, the hard sign, is only seen before vowels that have this y at the start. So that applies to ye, yo, yu, and ya. And it's just there as a marker of the y sound being present. As we said, in the absence of the hard sign, the y sound merges with the preceding consonant, making the preceding consonant, inverted commas, softer. Okay? So once again, let's go through these words. Repeat after me. Wirst. Abiyom. Subjekt. The next sign that we're going to look at, and this is our last letter of the Russian alphabet, is the soft sign, whose name is a better reflection of its role. Indeed, it is there to soften the consonant that precedes it. So you only ever find it after consonants, and it's there just to slightly alter the sound of the consonant. So we don't really see this in English. But maybe if some of you know Spanish, for example, then you might recognize this in words like niño, niño. So the tilde on top of the second N makes it softer. Ni, ni, right? And again, it's almost as if a letter Y, a Y sound, has been added after that second letter N. Niño, okay? In Russian, you do find this letter in the middle of words, but it is commonly at the end. So there's nothing coming after, so it's just a matter of softening the last consonant. If it helps you, you can try making it almost a nasal sound. That's not what we're after, but it might help you get to the right sound. So let me show you some Russian words now. Here's the first one. Sim. Sim which is the number seven. So listen carefully to the consonant at the end. Sim, m, m. That's the sound that we're after. Again, if there were no soft sign, it would just be sim. Whilst here it's sim. In linguistics, this is called palatalization. So you can read about that if you're really, really interested. But this is not a phonetics course, so I'm not going to tell you where to put your tongue what to do with your muscles around the mouth. 
as I keep saying, it's just a matter of you listening, repeating and practicing. Okay? Sim. Here's the next word. Dorscht. 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 Now, in this case, you might be able to hear that we're actually getting more of a D sound. So, a soft D starts to appear more like a T. Dorscht. Okay? And again, in this word, the letter Z is more like a Sh, but this is more of an exception rather than a rule. Dorscht. Now, you try this word. Obus. Obus. So when you get a soft sign next to a V, again, that becomes more like a F sound, right? Obus. And now the last word for this lesson is Kreml. Kreml. So it's L versus L. L, L. Kreml. Okay? Which is a citadel or, of course, the most famous Kreml in Russia is the Kremlin that you find in Moscow. Kreml. All right, I hope that made at least some sense. The point is that you don't need to make complete sense of all of the pronunciation and phonetics of every single letter that we've looked at. It's just a matter of you getting used to the sound and being able to produce it yourself so that others can understand you. And again, that comes with practice. So now that we have finished the Russian alphabet officially, I can congratulate you. In Russian, I would say pozdravlyayu. And we are now ready to move on to words rather than letters next time. So I'll see you then in lesson nine. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. See you next time. Goodbye.